Hey there, my friends at Lincoln Elementary School Garden. In this video, I'm going to give you a few tips on how you can go about planting your spring lettuce. We'll come back to the dinosaur here at the end of the video, and that'll help us to remember to do a real important thing in our garden. Okay, so I'm not going to give you too many details on how to plant the vegetables because that's already been covered in the previous video. Now, in that previous video, it was focused on winter vegetables, but really the same basic uh, approach will apply for the spring vegetables, this lettuce crop, with exception of one thing. With the spring lettuce crop, we need to make sure that we apply or add a drip irrigation bucket on the top of each of the beds, and then we're also going to add some bird netting over the top of the bed to make sure that the birds don't eat it. What I'm looking forward to is seeing a lot of beautiful colorful, nutritious vegetables growing in our garden beds again. Remember this? This is from two years ago. We grew some beautiful rainbow chard and then different types of kale. And that's what I'm looking forward to seeing again. Although this year, we're going to be planting just two different types of lettuce in the garden. We'll be planting romaine lettuce, this green one, and then also red leaf lettuce, this other type of lettuce over here. And I think you're going to enjoy both of those. They're very tasty types of lettuce. When you take the lettuce transplants out of the transplant tray, they're going to look like this. And you need to remember to be careful with the transplants. These are their delicate little root systems. Handle them gently and they will be able to grow a lot better for us. Now last year we did plant some romaine lettuce in the garden and it did really well. But we had some problems with birds and you can see that down here in the bottom of the bed where you've got these leaves with holes in them and kind of torn edges. That's bird damage, and this year we want to make sure that we don't have that happen. And I think we're getting a little bit better at figuring out some of the challenges in the garden, and one of them is birds. So we've got to start protecting our vegetables from birds a little differently than we did in the past. So the bed that I started with had a lot of different things growing in it, and what I did first was I had to take up all this different types of vegetation, these different plants. Now there's one plant I want you to be careful for because this does occur in a few of the planter boxes. That's this one right here. This is burning nettle. So if you see this one, what I would suggest is you have a teacher carefully remove that. You don't want to have your, your any of your sensitive skin like on your hands touch this because this will sting you. And uh, this is one weed that when we pull it up we'll just throw that in the garbage can. But I went through the vegetable beds the other day and I didn't see very much of this, so there shouldn't be much in there. Just be a little bit cautious with this. Now, all these other plants, this sweet alyssum and this different types of cover crop that have kind of grown a little bit in here, we can just pull that up and we'll use that as mulch around our vegetables. So here's the bed that I planted uh, as a demonstration for you. So this is bed number 17. So here's a di little different view of the bed. We've got our drip irrigation bucket in the corner, and then we've got our drip tubing lined up here. There's three main tubes. And what I would suggest you do is before you transplant your vegetables, you get the bucket set up because that's going to make it a lot easier for you to put in the six different lines of vegetables. So the first line of lettuce is right here. The second line is right here. The third one is there. The fourth one is down this way, the fifth one is here, and then the sixth one is over here. So basically there's a main drip tubing in between each pair of lines. So right down the middle there is tubing, and then down this middle of these other two lines is tubing, and then this last line of tubing is in between the line of vegetables that's on this side and also on this side. And what you can notice in this bed is I took all those leftover pieces of cover crop and sweet alyssum that I pulled up, and I'm using that as mulch to cover the soil surface. And that will just help the water to infiltrate or to move into the soil a little bit easier than if we didn't have mulch on the surface. Now, if the bed that you're planting doesn't have any vegetation that you pulled up, you don't need to worry about putting mulch on there. But I just wanted you to know that that's what you're seeing in this picture. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about how the bird netting should go on. So in each of these beds where we're putting the bird netting, we should have four stakes. The stakes should go right in the corner or so of the bed, and then you need to carefully line up the bird netting so that it covers the entire top of the bed and overlaps kind of evenly around the edges. And then after you've got it situated just right, 
then you can put a few stones around the edge to hold the bird netting down. Make sure that you put a few stones over there right next to the drip irrigation bucket too because we want to make sure the birds can't slip through in these little uh, corner areas. So after a few weeks our vegetable bed should start looking like this. Now in this case we don't have the bird netting over it but I just want you to know that in a few weeks this is what it'll look like but it'll also have bird netting on top. Okay, so the tools that you need are all over in the garden shed. Remember there was little hand tools over here and then the bird netting is right next to those. Keep in mind that we should only be using small hand tools like this because we don't want to damage the beds and these small tools won't cause any damage to our garden beds. The drip irrigation buckets are over near the greenhouse and you can take one of these for each of the beds and just carefully carry it over to the bed and then place it on the bed with your teachers or your volunteers help. Now a really important part of transplanting vegetables is making sure that they get watered really well right after you've transplanted them. And what I want you to use to do that is this garden watering can. This one is a really good one because it's got this good end on the end of it. This will allow the water to come out very slowly in these little holes. Now if the watering can doesn't have a nice end like this with holes, really small holes, don't use it. Just find the one that's got the good end on it and use that. And what I suggest you do is that for each of the beds, right after you've transplanted it, you should fill up this watering can three times and apply that water to the top of the bed carefully and slowly so that it infiltrates or sinks into the soil and gets the soil right around those little transplants nice and wet. And then after you've done that with the watering can, you can then fill up your five gallon uh, drip irrigation bucket and let the water start coming out that way as well. When you do that, you're gonna see water starting to drip out of the little black part here, the end part of this drip emitter. And that indicates that the water is flowing from the bucket down this tube and all the way down to the end here. Now, if for some reason water is not coming out of here, what you can try to do is you can turn this green thing a few times and that might unclog it. But here's another little video clip that kind of shows how you can also carefully remove this end piece. Now, it only pulls off if you've got it, this green piece turned up the right direction. So watch this little video clip on how to do that. And also you need to know that it's a little bit hard to do that, so you need to have somebody with strong hands that's able to unclog that drip emitter. Now in the previous years when we planted vegetables, we also planted a sweet alyssum plant in the corner of the bed to try to provide food for beneficial insects that would help us to control some pests on our lettuce or our other vegetables. This year we don't need to worry about that because we've got lots of sweet alyssum growing wild around the outside of the planter boxes. So you don't need to actually plant any sweet alyssum in your vegetable bed this year. All right, now for the dinosaur. What's that supposed to help us remember to do? Well, if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see one of the thumbnails for one of the videos has got a dinosaur in it. And that's a really important video for you to watch if possible. It's only five minutes long and it's focused on how to get your green thumb and that involves keeping a garden journal. So I want to remind you all to make sure that you watch that video and then make sure that you find the appropriate garden journal for the bed that you've planted in and fill out all the information that you need to. Anyway, in a few weeks our vegetables should be growing and starting to make our garden look a lot prettier, nice and green with all kinds of nutritious vegetables and before you know it we'll be out there eating them. So anyway, have fun gardening and we'll see you in a few weeks when we'll be ready to start eating the vegetables. Take care.